As you can probably tell by my voice, I'm sick as a chip, especially over Christmas, but I'm usually late to everything so this makes no difference. I thought it would be a good idea to run through some of my favourite songs of this year before we get to my album of the year video which will be long as fuck and probably late as fuck. Expect it early January. As always, this list will be heavily dominated by hip hop, as you know, that's what I listen to most. Some of these I'll speak about, some I'll just list off. Anyway, starting off at number 50, I've got Paramore with Crave. In at 49, I've got Key Glock with Dirt, with one of the most infectious instrumentals of the year. At 48, I've got Sky Zoo with Drop. At 47, we've got Fly Anakin and Foyzy with Blicky Bop. In at 46, I've got the ultimate summer anthem from an otherwise disappointing album, K Tremaine's Forever. At 45, I've got Alchemist and Hip Boy singles slipping into darkness where they take turns to rap on each other's beats, which was just super creative. In 44th place, I've got Young Nudie with Portabella. In at 43rd, I've got DP with Hillstone. At 42nd, I've got Navy Blue's Life's Terms, which has some of his most mature writing to date. In at 41 I've got everyone's favourite banger this year, JPEGs and Danny Brown's Perfect with those crazy trumpets that ring throughout the track. It's impossible not to get pumped up. <laughs> And this year we finally got the return of Sampha and Dancing Circles might just be the best track on there. Into the top 40 now I've got Little Yachty with his huge genre switched Black Seminole. At 38 we've got Arm and Hammer with Block Call with that incredible August fan and beat. And fittingly in at 37 I've got Billy Woods and Danny Brown's insane collab Year Zero. In at number 36 I've got Z Looper's wild yet beautiful track See Me Cry and with one of the best rap performances of the year I've got Black Fort with The Weather. In at 34 I've got Chuck Strangers, Pink Sifu and Fly Anakin who all float over this gorgeous sumo sample loop on Harry. At 33 I've got a song that has really grew on me with Visa's Save 2. At 30 second I've got the lush ballad from Kaliuchi's I Wish You Roses. At number 31 I've got everyone's favourite lover boy Drake who pretty much shook everyone this year when he took control over the conductor beat on ATM in Charlotte. Into the top 30 now I've got the first UK rap song on the list and that is Fimi Guerrero's and Lancy Four's energetic banger doppelganger. Right, at 29th I've got Billy Woods again with FaceTime with that infectious Samuel T. Herringhoff. Next up I've got Tyler the creator who looks back on his career and strips back his personality on Sorry Not Sorry. At number 27 I've got Young Thug who does a perfect job over this metro booming humming sample. In at 26 I've got Jesse Ware with the unforgettable and hypnotising pop ballad Free Yourself. Into the top 25 now we have Baby Keem and Kendrick's summer anthem, an almost goofy track The Hillbillies which you just can't help but dance to. In 24th I've got D2X with the uplifting soulful joint faith. In the 23rd now I've got Rap Ferreira, AJ Suede and Steel Tip Dove with an absolute buzzer beater of a track Preacher. Next up I've got Earl Sweatshirt's Danity Kane which sees the LA native take on a completely different sound but executing it perfectly for one of the catchiest songs of the year. And in number 21 I've got Ice Cold Bishop with one of the wildest songs of the year, Bad Influences from My Uncle. Moving into the top 20 I've got the track that's probably brought me the closest to tears this year and that is Navy Blue's Pillars which sees him tackle the loss of his grandfather and it's one of his best written tracks to date. In 19th place I've got Mike with African Sex Freak Fantasy which sees him take on this beat which just shouldn't be rapped on at all but he executes it with such precision that it's just impossible not to like. And in number 18 I've got Harvey Gold, Unruly and Unknown Inc which sees the two rappers deliver potent and verses and a flawless hook over some of the most electrifying production of the entire year. And speaking of flawless hooks, in 17th place I've got Danny Brown's Celibate, which has just been stuck in my head ever since the album dropped. Now in a completely different lane, I've got Olivia Rodrigo's Pretty Isn't Pretty in 16th, which is just a beautiful self-reflection of the female physical experience. It's genuinely terrific songwriting. Into the big picks now, and in 15th I've got Larry June's Soulful 60 Days which sees Alchemist return to his rapping roots and genuinely this is one of the songs that define my summer. 
And in number 14, I've got Boomerang, which sees Maxwell ride this fast moving instrumental as he reflects on his life in the most beautiful way. And yeah, up next, I've got Arm and Hammer again with one of the craziest production pieces of the year provided by LP, and the duo are just doing what they do best. And I think in 12th place, it's gonna have to be Westside Gun and Stove God Cook's luxurious ballad Kitchen Lights, which is the true standout on Then You Pray For Me. And finally, just missing out on the top 10, I've got Yusuf Days with the mesmerizing jazz opener to his magnificent album Black Classical Music. And then in a complete switch up, I've got Playboy Carty's 2024 sitting in 10th place. Yeah, when the world needed him most, he returned. Over this earwormy production, Carty switches vocal tone and delivers a hook that is imprinted into my brain already. And I've got another big hitter in 9th place with Travis Scott's Telekinesis. Yeah, this song would be in the top 10 for Scissors Verse alone, and I think I'm one of the only people who prefer this to Kanye's original Future Sounds, but this song is almost ethereal to me and the main highlight on Utopia, and I just can't get enough of it. Going from the top of the mainstream to the underground, I've got Clown Cat, Unruly and Esty Knack in 8th place. This is one of my most played songs of the year, and it's clear to see why. Unruly and Knack ride the high tempo instrumental flawlessly, and the atmosphere it creates is like no other track I've heard this year, especially with the change in pace of the hook. This is just real good hip hop. Don't go outside. In the seventh, and we've probably got the most relaxing song on the entire list, and that's B Kool Aid's warm, soul heavy sound good, which never fails to put me in a good mood. No one is doing it like Pink Seafood. Now, just sitting outside the top five, I've got Little Yachty Strike, which I swear to God I was cracking it. I have no idea how you can't like this song because that hook is just so earwormy, so infectious. It's short, it's sweet. It makes me want to get up and dance. Little Yachty's revival this year has been crazy to see, and this is the best example of him perfecting a sound. Now here we are, the big top 5, and there is no better way to start than with McKinley Dixon's exquisite beloved Paradise Jazz. The way the whole album culminates with this beautiful explosion of jazzy instrumentation and Dixon with so much confidence on the mic. Truly one of my favourite songs of the year, and one that is uplifting. <laughs> Up next in number 4, I've got Daniel Caesar's Always, which I honestly believe is his finest work to date and deserves all the success it has gotten this year. It's heartbreaking songwriting as he speaks about a past lover that has moved on as he still has a place in his heart for her. The instrumentation is just beautiful, especially as the drums kick in during the chorus and you just have to sing along man. And I'll be here. Now, order in this top three was just borderline impossible and are only separated by the finest of margins. So in third place, and in my opinion, the greatest song to come out of the whole of the UK this year, I've got Jim Legacy's Block Hug. Two completely different sounds. The first half driven with these strings, I think, with Jim using his vocals to create this almost upbeat atmosphere despite the dark subject matter. Then we get this whole sound switch in the second half with the atmosphere just completely changing. The strings are dropped and we are thrust straight into this 808 heavy instrumental with so many quotables from Jim and honestly I don't know how he executed this track to such a high level. It blows my mind every single time I've listened to it and it's one that you guys definitely need to check out. How can I buy a hand that fed man? I never had a hand that fed man. I've been trying to get to the top so I could hit the belly like Jeff Hardy. And then separating the top two was borderline impossible. But it had to be done. So at number two, I've got JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown's Kingdom Hearts Key. Yeah, this is just one of the most creative, compelling and exciting songs of the entire year. Experimental hip hop at its finest. Two of the greatest rappers of their respective generations coming together to show everyone how to push hip hop further. 
and this song is the perfect example. It contains some of Peggy's finest sampling to date, especially in that small section where the instrumental flips and he fills it with so much energy, it's just genius, and Red Veil absolutely kills his feature. Another track that always gets me gassed every single time I listen to it, and it hasn't gotten boring at all. In fact, each time I listen to this song, it gets better. It's that good. <laughs> But it just misses out on the top spot ever so slightly. And in first place, I've got a song that I had the pleasure of seeing live this year. And that for me just has to be Billy Woods and Kenny Siegel with the incredible soft landing. Maybe suicidal thoughts was the everyday struggle. For a brief sweet moment, it was nothing in the thought bubble. One of my most played tracks this year, which I guess you wouldn't naturally associate replay value with this sound of abstract hip hop, but this fucking has it. It's melancholic, a bit eerie. The instrumental is bleak, but unbelievably hypnotising. And Woods commands so much attention over Kenny Siegel's magnificent instrumental. His lines are relatable, reminiscent, and attention grabbing, punchliney. And honestly, Woods just does a great job at making standard, mundane, everyday life so compelling with the way he writes. Truly one of the greatest writers of our generation, and this song. Yeah, it's my highlight of 2023. And there we go, that is my top 50 songs of the year list. A great year for music, and I still feel sick as out. But that's it, keep an eye out for my album of the year list, which will no doubt be late, but I promise it'll be worth it, and there'll be a lot of good music there for you to check out. Appreciate any support, thanks for watching.